the Frugal Crafter, I'm going to share a really fun technique today that I did in my kids what, uh, my kids art class this week and I thought that you guys would enjoy it and you'd also enjoy sharing it with your children. We're going to be doing some expressive sketching with markers and then we're going to use water to kind of make it look a little watercolory. and also on my blog I'm going to have a giveaway of the um, Spectrum Aqua markers. Now I'll be giving away four sets of 12 so there's the nature and the essentials and the floral and um primaries I believe and these are really great markers but I'm going to tell you right now that we can do this you can do this technique with whatever markers you have okay so this one right here was the first one I did this jellyfish and this is what I'm going to show you how to do today you don't need any experience it's super easy and fun um and I did this with my spectrum aquas and then I thought well this is awesome I really want to do this with my kids class but I was afraid to bring in my my precious my precious markers um you know because you know kids can put a lot of wear and tear on stuff and that's why you know kids markers have those durable tips so what I did was I grabbed my uh, big box of kids markers and there's tape in there for some reason but you know there's the Crayolas and the crazy arts and rose arts and you know a, assortment of kids markers and we did the other ones with kids markers so this one was done with kids markers and it still is really fun and definitely doable for this technique and the following ones are done with kids markers this was um, a seahorse demonstration. Maybe we'll get to that. I don't know. I can always do another one if I don't get to it and you guys want to see it. Let me know. Um, did a crab, which is just really fun. I wanted to have a few. I wanted to have like three examples just to be like, okay, here's three to pick from. And then there were a couple of girls there that wanted to do dolphins. So I told them, you know what? Draw a banana. Draw a banana. And then we'll turn that into a dolphin. And so you made it easy so they could learn. Always look for the easiest shapes. And... Um, Oh, there's another another um, seahorse, and I want to show you the one my daughter drew. She's 10. She did this one, and I just think they just looked great. Everybody that came to class came away with a beautiful picture. I'm going to show you how to do the jellyfish today because it is, um, it's fun and it's easy, and it will help kind of break the ice with your markers. We're going to start off, and you'll notice with the tips on these markers, you can go on the top and you can get a, you can get a finer line, and also you have the back side where you get a super duper fine line. Or you can use the edge and you can kind of give it more pressure and you can get some, you know, darker lines. So I'm kind of making this kind of umbrella shape for my jellyfish with a little bit of this color. And then I'm going to grab another shade of purple here. I think I'm going to work with the brush tips because we are going to be watercoloring. I might just kind of scribble in a larger area of color. Oh, I want to put some of the little tendrils kind of coming down here. Do that with the other color as well. So I really like these markers. I'm so glad that Hallmark Scrapbook is giving me four sets to give away. Um, I love to share um, the products that I love with you guys. Let's give a few of these, maybe bluer ones. Give a little bit of that in the rubber on the end just to kind of give it a little shading. Let's do some pinks. This one looks nice and bright. So when I'm working, there's a little tip. I put a rubber band around my markers, my marker case, because I they sell the case too. I think it's about seventeen dollars. Um, that's it, it, I can keep them upright while I'm working, but then I can um, lay them down flat because you really want to store double-ended markers flat. So I like to do that. And um, I think the regular price on these are twenty-four. The the case is twenty-four, and Hallmark has them for seventeen. So it is quite a bit of a savings to get it there. And as I'm working, a lot of times I'll pull out the markers and I'll leave them, so I just go back to the same ones over and over again. So to make the bubbles, here's a really great trick for you. Um, I start drawing in the air. I start drawing a circle, moving my whole arm. The the range of motion is coming from my shoulders, and then I just set my uh, marker down on the uh, on the paper and keep on moving. It gives you really nice natural bubbles and circles. I'm gonna do one. Kind of go back. See when I go back and forth and arch it, I don't get that part that more roundy circle, like kind of like an, an arc, but that's alright. I can even add in a little bit more color if I think I need it. And I can even put some waves if I want some like water lines in there. And if I want to add another blue, we could do that. We can add a little bit more blue here and there to some of these bubbles. 
The, the point is to be expressive. Get over your fear of the white paper. I know it can be scary. This paper I'm working on is not expensive. It is the Dick Blick white sulfite drawing paper, and I believe it's the heavier weight. Um, it's really fabulous, and I um, I tested on a on a, um, a scrap drawing. I tested it with my peach tester pen. This is by American Crafts. If you make a line on your paper, if it stays purple or blue, it's pH neutral or acid free. If it crosses over to gray into yellow, then it's acidic. So they don't say this paper's acid free, but according to this pen, it is, or pH neutral anyway. So, um, so that's good. So now I'm just going to kind of selectively go over some of my, some of my drawing here. And the cool thing about this, I'm not working on watercolor paper, so it's not going to lift up completely. Um, but I wanted this to be an inexpensive craft I could do with the kids and not like worry if they're using 10 sheets of paper, because this is very inexpensive paper. Um, I like how you get both the you get both the expressive lines, but then you get kind of the watercolor look as well. Okay, now I'm just going to wet these um, these little bubbles. I'm going to leave some white in there because I want to keep, um, I want it to kind of have that bubbly reflection, kind of like a light reflecting in it. I want it to still look like transparent. I'm using my Prima water brush here. I just, um, and for the kids class, I just had a, I also teach a watercolor class at the library, so I just use my large round watercolor brushes and put very little amounts of water in, uh, jars for them so I didn't have to worry about spilling too much and have to worry about them soaking their paper too much. Um, and then another thing you can do is you can grab, I've got one right around here, I'll just take the stamping blocks, it's handy. Um, take those colors, especially the blues, oops I keep, I keep forgetting the white stripe has the uh, brush tip end. Grab some of that, make it a little palette here so I can flick on some paint again with the wrong end. My, my, there we go. Add some of that darker. Squeeze out a little drop of water on there. And make it look really bubbly. I can also add some of the watery lines in there too. So it was such a fun class to do. I love that the parents even got in the act and, um, and created as well. It was just so much fun and I thought you guys might enjoy this too. Maybe a weekend project to do with your kids. Make sure you stop by my blog. I'll put a link below. Um, my blog post should go up the exact same time this video does, but if it doesn't, just be patient um, with me and check back. But I will have a place where you can sign up. Just leave a comment and um, you might win one of these sets of markers. I want to thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. And um, until next time, happy crafting!